Por ti me a fricunda. Ik heb een idee dat ik uh, afgekomen op twee broers, de Benham Brothers. David en Jason Benham, de Benham Brothers, were planned stars of the HGTV show Flip It Forward, set to premiere in October, in which they would have helped families purchase homes they otherwise could not afford. They got to know us now. The, the TV station got to know the Benham Brothers a little bit more, and they decided these guys were good guys. They were Christians. <clears throat> they got to know us a little bit more and then they made a judgment call recognizing that David and I have no hate in our heart for anyone because they don't have any um, we've been running a successful real estate company for the last 11 years and we help all people. There is no discrimination, said Jason Benham. His comments were echoed by his brother. We love all people. I love homosexuals. I love Islam. I love Muslims. And my brother and I would never discriminate. Never have we, never would we, said David Benham. Now, what, what are they saying? What they are saying is they love the people, they don't love what they do, and they don't love what they stand for. Never have I spoken against homosexuals as individuals and gone against them. I speak about an agenda. And that's really the, what the point of this is, is that there is an agenda that is seeking to silence the voices of men and women of faith. He added, I say, the first and last thought on our minds as we begin and end each day is, have we, sinned, have we shined Christ's light today? Our faith is a fundamental calling in our lives and the centerpiece of who we are. As Christians, we are called to love our fellow man. Anyone who suggests that we hate homosexuals or people of other faiths are either misinformed, misinformed or lying. Over the last decade, we have sold thousands of homes with the guiding principle of producing value and breathing life into each family that has crossed our path. And we do not, nor will we ever discriminate against people who do not share our views. But what happened? What happened was that there is a group in America that is pro-gay. And they started, and then eventually when the TV station found that there's no, there's no foundation in the allegations, they got, these people got another group that manufactured stories. And so, the TV station called them up and said, we need to have a, 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 a video conference. They went into the conference and they were told, we have decided to scrap it. The program and they said we were saddened to hear HGTV's decision with all of the grotesque things that can be seen and heard on television today you would think there would be room for two twin brothers who are faithful to our families committed to biblical principles and dedicated professionals if our faith costs us a television so show so be it and we are going to be confronted with same kind of decisions in the coming days that we are living in. Ons gaan kom op plekke waar ons het besluit moet maak of ons dit, of ons op een standpunt gaan staan. Ek het voor die dienst, dat ek in Nebel gepraat en ek het vir hom gesê, dat hier die besluit van die, van die hooggerechtshof, van die NGK, het nou tot gevolg, dat Enige persoon kan daar nou inkom in enige kerk en iets wil doen en hy kan hoofd toe gaan as ek vir hom sou sê nee op grond van wie en wat hy is. Want daar is een toetsaak klaar wat klaar gedoen is wat hulle uitspraak opgelever het met ander woorde iemand kan kom en my hoofd toe vat of zelfs voor jou hoofd te vat, als jij zo'n so standpunt inneemt, tien. 
Maar laat ik weer zeggen, ik heb niks in die mensen. Ik heb aanzoek gekregen en daar iemand heeft mij geconfronteerd en gezegd, uh, die dame heeft van mij gezegd, wel graag trouw. En ze heeft van mij gezegd, maar mijn verloofde is, is een dame. En ik heb al gezien mijn mensen, ik is jammer. Ik kan niet. Want het is niet in lijn met God zijn woord. Ik zie maar in elk geval mijn licentie laat het niet doen. En al heeft mijn licentie dit toegelaten, zou ik dit niet gedoen doen. Maar dan weet ik, loop ik die gevaar dat zo so iemand dan iets in hulle kop krijgt en hulle gaan naar hoofd toe, dan ga ik aan die verkeerde kant staan. Those who stand in the gap for others operate out of a spirit of love, a deep love for God and other people he created. Not only is this love a deep emotion that leads us to affection and attention, it is also a fire burning inside that seeks to protect and defend the one we desire. Throughout the Bible we see jealous love, the jealous love of God for us because we are the apple of His eye and the jewel in His creation. He doesn't want the devil to snatch us away from Him. He wants our affection and He offers us His protection. But how jealous are we <coughs> for Him? If we love Him, we should be. We saw this up close, and this is again talking about the Venom brothers. About a year ago, when a friend of ours reached out through email, have you seen all the articles circulating about the Christian singer leaving his wife and kids? For who? For another man. He professes Jesus as Lord, yet he is leaving his family because he is attracted to men. And he's, he, and listen to this, and he is being hailed as a hero. I can be who I want to be. I am, I can be myself. Dit word ek gedierig dier. Ek kan myself wees en ek gaan nou nog vir u wees hoe ons verander en hoe hier die self ding in ons leven ingekom. Our cousin is struggling with the same thing and articles like this make it tough because we love him so much. Want him to embrace the freedom he has in Christ. Live in the power of that freedom. We need help. Luister nou na dit. After an hour or so of reading various articles about the issue along with the comment threads, uh, threads beneath, our brains hurts, hurts almost as much as our hearts. It was a mass confusion. The thought of our kids soon having to navigate truth through the tornado of stories and opinions like this on social media had us pondering the question, what does love require of us? I will for more of what he said. En, en uit my hart uit kon dit. Ek is nie op Facebook nie. Ek is nie op Instagram nie. Ek is nie op enige gram nie. Ek is wel op WhatsApp. Maar ek wil vir u sê, die, die, die sociale media platform is een van die gevaarlikste plekke wat jy kan wees. So, they say, so we turn to our phones. What were the Christian leaders saying about this on social media the ones we respected and trusted what did their love for god require of them in this moment as leaders of people in a culture embracing a lie in the whirlwind of confusion we knew what people needed was truth communicated with compassion and clarity but we couldn't find anything nobody was speaking up about this very public media story so one of our wives called the very large church that we used to stand, used to attend to and asked what the extremely well-known pastor was saying, specifically about the people, about the topic of marriage. This response left us speechless. This was the response. Our official response, a representative of the pastor said without hesitation, is that we are intentionally vague on this topic. We purposefully do not address this at our church. If we got into this discussion, the representative continued, half our congregation would leave. Kom ek vir u sê, dat in ons groot kerke vandag gaan die selfde ding gebeur. Want mense wil nie meer die waarheid oor nie. 
daar is een gesteelte in die skrif wat sê, dat mense wil op hulle gehoor gestreel word, hulle wil hoor hoe goed hulle is, en hoe mooi hulle is, en hoe lekker die lewe is. Love looks something. Love looks like something, and it certainly isn't self-seeking but is a righteous jealousy that protects and defends the truth. To avoid the truth, we know such people, we, we, to, an, to avoid the truth that we know that sets people free, it's not very loving. Today God is calling us to stand in the gap with a love that is jealous, one that will protect and defend regardless of cost or consequence. Nou gaan ek vir jou paar goed kwoteer van Ravi Zacharias. Hy sê, love is a commitment that will be tested in the most vulnerable areas of spirituality. A commitment that will force you to make some very difficult choices. It is a commitment that demands that you deal with your lust your greed, your pride, your power, your desire to control, your temper, your patience, and every area of temptation that the Bible clearly talks about. It demands the quality of commitment that Jesus demonstrates in his relationship to us. What was his commitment? He died. He died. To hy in die tuin van Gethsemane gaan bid, het het hy geweet wat op hom wacht. Hy het geweet, hy moet sterwe vir die wereldse sondes. Hy het geweet, dit is wat op hom gelaai gaan wil. My interpretatie van die gedeelte daarvan is, daar is iets wat hy nie geweet. Want aan die kruis het hy gekom op die punt, waar hy gesê het, my God, my God, waarom het hy my vir? Maar as hy dit nie deurgegaan het nie, het hy nie die vermoe gehad om u en my by God te reconcilieer. Hy moes daar die afsnijding van Godse teenwoordigheid ervaar, om u en my terug te bring in Godse teenwoordigheid. In the 1950s, kids lost their innocence. They were liberated from their parents by well-paying jobs, cars and lyrics in music that gave rise to a new term. The generation gap. In the 1960s, kids lost their authority. It was a decade of protest. Church, state and parents were all called into question and found wanting. Their authority was rejected, yet nothing ever replaced it. In the 1970s, kids lost their love. It was a decade of meism, meism, dominated by hyper, hyphenated words beginning with Self, self-image, self-esteem, self-assertion. It made for a lovely world. Kids learned everything there was to know about sex and forgot everything there was to know about love. And no one had the nerve to tell them there's a difference. In the 1980s, kids lost their hope. Stripped of innocence, authority and love and plagued by the horror of a nuclear nightmare. Large and growing numbers of this generation stopped believing in the future. In the 1990s, kids lost their power to reason. Less and less were they taught the very basics of language, <coughs> truth and logic. They grew up with the irrationality of a postmodern world. In the new millennium, kids woke up and found out that somewhere in the midst of all this change, they have lost their imagination. Violence and perversion, in, perversion entertained them till none could talk of killing innocents since, since none was innocent anymore. There was no innocent. These days, it is not just that the line between right and wrong has been made unclear. Today Christians are being asked by our culture today to erase the lines and move the fences. And if that were not bad enough, we are being asked to join in the celebration cry by those who have thrown off the restraints of religion 
of the, uh, uh, the restraints religion had, had imposed upon them. 